This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by 23andMe. Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buffalo. I'm your host, John Rentgers, the show where you could ask any question you've got from the wide, wide world of technology and sometimes a little outside of it. So on this episode of Ask the Buffalo, we're going to talk about T-Mobile's crazy new plans. We're going to talk about build-to-order phones, talk about what goes on behind the scenes here, and how good are the Ultra Pixel camera right on the coming HTC devices. This is Ask the Buffalo. Let's go ahead and get started. Rishab Sharma, who asks, do you think the four ultra pixels will beat 13 megapixels? So by 13 megapixels, I think you're asking about the Galaxy S4. That one really is yet to be seen. I will say though, when we were in New York for the Galaxy S4 event, we did shoot some sample pictures with the S4, and then we shot some same sample pictures with the HTC One, and the HTC One did a pretty good job. You can see what they look like right here, but certainly when we get the phones in a real world environment to test them in low light and regular light. So it's gonna be very interesting to put those two suckers head to head. The next question, comes from Craston D who asks, what do you think about a build to order smartphone? Do you believe there's any chance for it to become a reality in the near future? So I think what you're referring to is Google's alleged X project where phones are going to be built to order just like a lot of laptops are a model that Dell really helped pioneer. This is a really interesting idea. I'm not sure if it's going to come to fruition. It depends how customizable they can get. So it'll be as customizable as do you want to choose a screen, a 720p screen, a 1080p screen, or low resolution. Can you choose the amount of RAM, maybe 512 up to 2 gig? Can you choose a hard drive? If they get really granular and you'll be able to customize everything on a phone, it could be very cool, but price could get out of line really quickly. Uh, so there's something in economics called economy of scale. The more you make, the less expensive they are. You know, you go to Costco and you buy a pallet of toilet paper. It's less expensive than buying just a single roll of toilet paper. So their economy of scales when companies make phones, they make the same phone, goes through the assembly line over and over and over and over again. Uh, having things be custom involves little bits of differences that go into it. Whether it's going to be hand differences or machines can be triggered to do different things, it's going to add to the cost definitely. So I really would keep a lookout to see how that works. But it's a really cool model. And if anybody can pull it off, it's probably Google. All right, so the next question is about what happens behind the scenes. It comes from Josh. Hey, John, about how many videos do you record in one day and how many takes does it take to get through one video? Usually it'll depend on a day, generally one to two videos. So we'll film the three or revision three episodes that's right and just rants it's rumor roundup and ask the buffalo every monday wednesday and friday i'll film those a few days in advance kick them off to john quatch he'll do the editing and then whatever else comes up during the week some new phones new tablets new news whatever else is interesting we will film i don't have a set number that i put every week and usually i can do my videos in generally one take the majority of my videos aren't scripted the videos that i do have a script that i use a prompter for to give me my notes or something like rumor roundup when there are a lot of rumors i want to make sure i get all the information correct throw on recite the specs of the phone. I don't want to mess something up. So those will have a script. Every other video I do is really just coming right out of my head. I'm not an actor, so trying to read from a script just never sounded overly natural. So being able to talk from the heart and from my mind uh, has always worked out better for me. So hopefully that helps answer your question. The next question comes from Rudy. Hey, John, what do you think of T-Mobile's new no contract strategy? And do you think the other carriers will follow? That's a really good question, Rudy. So if you don't know, T-Mobile has branded themselves the uncarrier. Essentially what that means is no more contracts. They don't have to sign a two year deal to get a new phone. What you can do is you can walk into a T-Mobile store, you can pay full price for a phone. They will unlock that phone for you when you pay a full price. So if you want, you can take it to any carrier, you own that phone. Uh, and you pay just a monthly data fee uh, or voice fee or a combination of both. And that's the model. But what's really different about it is that you can pay for the phone over time too. Let's say you wanna get a Galaxy S3 or 4, whatever it might be. So you can put a down payment on the phone. You could pay out the rest of that phone over about a two year period if you want. So that sounds very similar to a contract. Uh, but you can pay that phone off anytime that you want. Then as soon as you pay it off in full, T-Mobile will unlock that phone for you and you own it, but you're never locked into a contract which means you're paying full price for a device, but you can upgrade anytime you want. It's a really cool model to say, okay, I own my phone. I'm with T-Mobile because I want to be with them. And I think that it's a model that if successful, certainly other carriers will copy. Uh, but I think it's going to take quite a while to see if T-Mobile can pull it off. So hopefully that helped. 
Answer your question. So let me step away from the questions for a minute to thank our friends and sponsors at 23andMe. Ever wonder what you might learn from your DNA? I can only imagine what might be stored inside these cells. 23andMe enables anyone to explore their own DNA based on a saliva analysis of approximately 1 million data points in your DNA. Customers receive over 200 personalized reports that cover health risks, physical traits, carrier status for conditions that could be passed on to children, and more. If you're thinking about having kids and you want to see if, you know, maybe you might pass something on or your parent did something, you want to see if you're a carrier for it, you can really find out a ton of information. It's pretty neat, actually. 23andMe first offered their personal genome service in November 2007 for $999 and only provided 14 reports. Today, though, you can get over 200 reports for just 99 bucks. It might sound intimidating, but 23andMe makes the whole process actually pretty easy. First, you buy a DNA kit online, then you mail in your saliva sample. Postage is already included. After a few weeks, you receive over 200 health, trait, ancestry reports, and that's really it. So go ahead and get started. Check out 23andMe.com slash technobuffalo to learn more. Learn all about your genome, learn all about what you got going on inside of you. So thank you guys for watching another episode of Ask the Buffalo. I'm your host, John Renter. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, give it a big fatty thumbs up. We most definitely appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next video.